Check it out, everybody. This is your pin ultimate, meaning the one before the last one, video for the Axe Challenge. We are here very close to the end in Axe Chapter 27. Here in Chapter 27, Paul finally, after years of delay, gets to set sail for Rome. All right, so... We're going to get to a map, but first some details I want to point out in these opening verses. In verse 1, we hear the term we. We have shifted back to the first person narrative. The last time we had this was in chapter 21, when Paul and the author and the entourage arrived in Jerusalem over two years ago. Assumedly, the author has been with uh, Paul in Jerusalem and maybe even going to Caesarea, this whole time, although we don't know because the text doesn't say. We at least know they stayed in the area, probably Jerusalem. We don't know if they went to Caesarea or not when Paul made that journey as part of his legal proceedings. And now that the author has rejoined the story, it's time for travel. And because the author is now with them and with Paul, we get all the details of this journey to Rome. In verse 1, we get the name of the Roman soldier that's in charge of this prisoner transfer and also what unit he's from. In verse 2, we get the name, we get the place where the ship is from, Adrantium, or however that would be pronounced. That's where the ship is from, and it will be here on the map here in a bit. Also in verse 2, we hear that Aristarchus has been around uh, the whole time. Now, if that name's not familiar... Uh, we heard about Aristarchus earlier in Acts in 1929, that's chapter 19, verse 29, by the way, as part of the whole affair in Ephesus, and Aristarchus is also mentioned in chapter 20, verse 4, as a traveling companion with Paul. Also, and this is interesting, that name, assumedly same person, shows up also in Colossians, chapter 4, verse 10, and in the book of Philemon, chapter 1, verse 24. So, Aristarchus, whoever that was, uh, gets mentioned quite a bit, actually, for kind of just being a random character that shows up in the story. All right, so now it's time to travel, and here are the maps. You see here a map of the Eastern Mediterranean that shows the place it mentioned in the travel, and also a detail of the island of Crete shows up here as well. And we're going to leave this up for a while. Now, skipping ahead to verse 9, the fast that is mentioned in verse 9 is the Day of Atonement which is a Jewish religious observance that falls at the end of September or beginning of October, and it moves around different calendar systems. And it's in there to mention that it was a that would be a time of stormy weather in the eastern Mediterranean, and it's mentioned as kind of a calendar marker so people know what time of year it is. Uh, also, in verses 9 through 12, there is contention over what to do. So they've, they've set sail, they've traveled in all those different places, they got sent to Crete by the wind, and now there's contention of what to do in Crete because winter is coming. Paul says, hey, we shouldn't go. Uh, Captain and the crew say otherwise. In verses 13 through 20, there's the great storm, and we get details of the efforts of the sailors to try and save the storm. Uh, it's a drastic step when they throw the tackle over uh, because that's what kind of helps you sail the ship. So if you lose that, that's a big deal. So that is an act of desperation. In verses 21 through 26, Paul gives a message that he has this divine vision uh, that they're all going to be make they're all going to make it through. Paul also takes that they, takes that time to say, "I told you so. Should have listened to me. We should have stayed in Crete." In verses 27 through 32, there is the drama of um, some people trying to escape on the boat which is a smaller sailing vessel that the ship would have carried. So think about a big ship. It has smaller boats that you use to traverse between the big ship and land and that sort of thing. So they try to escape. And then in verses 33 through 38, they finally eat after 14 days. And it mentions here that there are a lot of people on this ship. Um, it's also worth noting in this story that Paul sets the example that when it's time to eat, he first give, gives thanks, which not a lot to give thanks for in that particular situation other than you're alive. Uh, you've been, at, you've been in, kind of lost at sea in a storm for 14 days and still always 
finding something to be thankful for. So go Paul on that one. And now near the end on verse 39, the ship is finally wrecked on a reef off of some mysterious shore. We don't know where. The centurion here acts to save the lives of the prisoners uh, and saves them from being killed by the soldiers. Everyone from the boat makes it ashore. But here's the question. Where are they? We don't know yet. Find out next in our final chapter as we close out the Acts Challenge and we talk about Acts 28. We find out where they washed ashore at and what comes next as Paul continues this journey to Rome and the book of Acts comes to a conclusion. Thanks for watching and tune in for the final video of the Acts Challenge.